Welcome to another session of FRQ Review with Rachel and Madison. On this episode, we are going to solve the AP Calculus AB 2014 Form B Question 4 FRQ. This is a non-calculator question, so don't cheat yourself. It covers area under the curve, concavity, and the second fundamental theorem of calculus. The continuous function f is defined on the interval negative 5 to 8. The graph of f, which consists of four line segments, is shown in the figure above. Let g be the function given by g of x equals 2x plus the integral of f of t dt. This means that g of x is 2x plus the area under the curve from f of f of x from negative 2 to x. Part a. Find g of 0 and g of negative 5. To find g of 0, you have to plug 0 into the equation where x is. Because the integral goes from a smaller number to a bigger number, we leave it as it is. We know that 2 times 0 equals 0. And to solve for the integral, we are going to solve for the area under the curve from negative 2 to 0. To solve for the area under the curve, it is easiest to split the graph into shapes and find the area of those shapes. If you decide to split the graph into a trapezoid, you will see that one of the bases is 2 and the other is 1, and the height is 2. So your equation for the area of a trapezoid will be area equals 1 half 2 plus 1 times 2. Once you solve that, you should see that the area equals 3. If you decide to split the graph into a triangle and a rectangle, you can see that the area of the rectangle should be 2 because the base is 1 and height is 2. And for the triangle, the height is 2 and the base is 1. So the equation for the rectangle would be area equals 2 times 1. And the equation for the triangle would be area equals 1 half 2 times 1. Because you split the graph into two different shapes, you now need to add their separate areas together so you can get a total area of 3. Now to find g of negative 5, you have to plug negative 5 into the equation where x is. Do you notice anything different about this equation? No? Let me explain. Don't let these negatives trip you up. Don't forget the negative 2 is actually larger than the negative 5. Because of this, you need to flip the numbers and move a negative sign in front of the integral. So again, we need to split the graph into shapes we can find the area of and solve. You will need to split the graph into two triangles for this part of the equation. When you plug negative 5 into the 2x part of the equation, it becomes negative 10. First, we will solve the triangle from negative 2 to negative 3. You can see that the base is 1 and the height is 2 for this triangle. So the equation for this area would be area equals 1 half 2 times 1, which would give you an area of 1. To solve for the second triangle, you can see that the base is 2 and the height is 4. But because this triangle is below the x-axis, the height is negative. So the equation for this area would be area equals 1 half negative 4 times 2, which would give you an area of negative 4. Because you split the graph into two different triangles, you now need to add their separate areas together so you can get a total area of negative 3. Now the equation should look like g of negative 5 equals negative 10 minus negative 3. This then gives you a total of g of negative 5 equals negative 7. Make sure that when the triangle is below the x-axis, it will have a negative sign in front of it because the area of the triangle is technically negative. This is a common error that many people make, so don't forget to make this connection. 
Part B, find the derivative of g of x in terms of f of x. For each of g double prime 4 and g double prime negative 2, find the value or state that it does not exist. To find the derivative of g of x, we just need to find the derivative of the equation. The first part should be easy. The derivative of 2x is just 2. For the second part, a lot of people tend to forget that f of x is derived from the second fundamental theorem of calculus when finding the derivative of g of x. You can recognize that you need to use the second fundamental theorem of calculus whenever you see f of t in an integral, a constant on the bottom, and x as the b value. Because we have that f of t in the integral, a constant of negative 2 on the bottom, and x as the b value, this is why we are going to use the second fundamental theorem of calculus for this problem. So for this problem, you just simply move the x to where the t is, and you get f of x. For the second part of problem b, you can see that we need to find the second derivative of g. So to do this, simply find the derivative of the equation we just found. You know that the 2 goes away, and you are left with f prime of x. In the context of this question, f prime of x is the slope of a certain point on the graph. So we are now solving for g double prime of 4, which is equal to f prime of 4, which means we just need to find the slope at x equals 4 on the graph. As you can see, the slope for g double prime of 4 is negative 1, which makes sense because a line on the graph is moving in a negative direction. Now we are going to solve for g double prime of negative 2, which is also equal to f prime of negative 2. Because the limits are not the same from both sides, and because the slope goes from positive to negative at this point, the slope does not exist. Part C. On what intervals, if any, is the graph of g concave down? Give a reason for your answer. In the context of this problem, this means that since we are looking for the graph of where g is concave down, this means that we are, need to find where g double prime is less than zero. And we know that from part b that g double prime of x equals f prime of x. So we are essentially looking for where f prime of x is less than zero, or in other words, where the slope of the graph is negative. This is where you should see a negative slope on the graph of f. For this problem, the answer is negative 2 to 0 and 2 to 8. Don't forget to give a reason for your answer, like the second part of the question asks. There are a couple different explanations that are correct. The graph of g is concave down on the intervals negative 2 to 0 and 2 to 8, since g prime of x equals 2 plus f of x decreases on those intervals would be a good answer. You could also write the graph of g is concave down on the intervals negative 2 to 0 and 2 to 8, since g double prime is less than zero and f prime is less than zero, which means the slope is negative and concave down. Part D. The function h is given by h of x equals g times x cubed plus 1. Find h prime of 1. Show the work that leads to your answer. Make sure you read the problem as g of x cubed plus 1. This way, it'll make more sense that you need to use the chain rule. Before we plug 1 into the equation, we first need to find the derivative of h of x. To do this, you need to use the chain rule. Before we solve a more complicated problem involving the chain rule like this one, let's try to solve a more simple one to make sure you know the basics. Try this one on your own. Did you get this answer? Using the power rule, bring the 6 to the front of the parentheses and change the exponent to 5. Leave what is inside the parentheses as it is, and then take its derivative and multiply it times the whole equation to get the right answer.
Here's a generic equation that you can look at to help you solve any chain rule problem. Now that we remember how to use a chain rule, we can easily solve for h prime of x in this problem. You just take the derivative of g and leave whatever is in the parentheses, but don't forget to multiply it by the derivative of what is in the parentheses. Now you can plug in 1 to the equation, and you'll eventually get back to g prime of 2 times 3. At this point, we need to go back to part b and look at our equation for g prime of x. We see that g prime of x equals 2 plus f of x. This means that g prime of 2 equals 2 plus f of 2, and now we need to look at the graph to see what f of 2 equals. As you can see, f of 2 equals 3. Now we find that g prime of 2 equals 5, and now we can plug this back into the original equation. The last step is to multiply g prime of 2, which is 5, times 3 to get your answer of 15. Thank you for tuning in to another session of FRQ Review, and we hope that our explanation made this problem a little more understandable. Good luck studying, and don't forget to strive for that 5!